Good morning. My name is John Hudson. I'm the pastor at Pilgrim Church, United Church of Christ at 25 South Main Street in Sherburne, Massachusetts. But today I'm coming to you not from the church, uh, but from the dining room of the parsonage. We've had amazing volunteers and professional people since March, every single Sunday going to the church and recording our services. And we just thought it was really important to kind of give people a little break and a little Sunday off. But even as we do that, I want to offer a prayer of deep thanksgiving for Doug, our tech guy, for Dave, our music person, for Angie, who has done amazing children's sermons, and for all of the deacons and the soloists who have joined us for this Sunday. <clears throat> so apologies in advance if this is more like cable access than cable TV. Um, but I'll try my best. Um, and uh, I thank Doug for trying to training me on this uh, yesterday. I really have only one announcement to share. It's one that I'm very excited about. On Sunday, September 6th, Sunday, September 6th, at 9 a.m., we will be holding services outside uh, at the church, on the church grounds. Uh, hopefully inside of a tent and then outside of that tent, too, We'll have a good PA system. The Pilgrim Band's going to play. It's going to be a wonderful Sunday. Kind of remind us how wonderful it is to be together, not just virtually, but physically. Um, there'll be much more information about that uh, in the next two weeks, both on the eWord, uh, on our website, and on our Facebook Live page. And so with that, let us come into worship. Our call to worship is from Psalm 34 verses 1 to 3, Psalm 34, verses 1 to 3, and I would invite you to read along with me at home if you have your Bible with you. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Amen. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't get through a week here in um, life without making a mistake, without losing my patience with someone, without forgetting to say thank you to someone who I might take for granted. Um, without maybe using words that I shouldn't have used or without being silent when I should have um, spoken up. And so at this time, I would invite you to enter into the quiet places of your hearts as we come into a time of confession uh, and confession of sin and assurance of pardon. So let's all be in a spirit of prayer together. Let us pray. Oh God, on this beautiful summer Sunday, on this Sabbath morning, we're aware of all the blessings of our lives, of all the good things, of all the ways that our lives are abundant. But sometimes, God, we cannot see that for whatever reason. We cannot see it because sometimes we lose hope. We cannot see it because maybe sometimes we feel like we're entitled to all of those things. We cannot see it because we're in too much of a hurry. Or we cannot see it because we feel beaten down by the way things have been going lately in our world, not all the time, but certainly much of the time. And so this day, God, hear us as we bring to you all of the longings and the desires of our hearts and bring to you the ways that we might have fallen short in this past week and the ways that we lean upon you and depend upon you for grace and for love and forgiveness. And so now in the quiet places of our hearts, please enter in and hear our prayers. And so all of these things we ask in the name of the one who is our redeemer and our sustainer, the one who blots away all of our mistakes, who erases the slate 
and allows us to begin again. And what a gift that is. Jesus Christ, who always invites us back into the Sacred Heart for um, eternal resurrection and for second chances um, in our world, in our lives, and in our souls. And we hope for all of these things in trust, and we pray together as a sign of our unity in him, our teacher and friend, Jesus Christ. And so we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so if uh, there are any young people watching today, any um, uh, kids or children, um, I would ask uh, parents to kind of get them in front of the screen at this point because I'd like to share with them a special children's message. So today, we're going to be talking about a word that you probably know pretty well um, and a word that you may have heard me talk about before, but one I want us to think about practicing more and more in our lives. And um, the word that we might not know too well or understand, it's a big word, it's gratitude. But the word that we might understand and um, know is to give thanks, thanksgiving. And that's when in our lives, we step back from everything that's going on, from how busy we are, or how frustrated we are, or how tired we are, or how we're not getting along with our sibling, um, or someone spilled milk at the table, or whatever. And even in the midst of kind of being a little cranky sometimes, um, we step back and we look for things in our lives that we can thank God for that we can thank God for because God creates all things in our lives. God gives all things in our lives and we are kind of blessed enough to receive those gifts. And so I want you to think about today what maybe one thing is that you are really grateful to God for in your life. What are you thankful to God for? And I'm going to share a couple of my things today, and, and then maybe um, you can think about what some of those things are, too, and maybe share with your parents. So I've got three things that I'm really grateful for today. Actually, I think I'll do four. The first is technology. That's what's bringing me here into your living room uh, today. Um, technology, our cell phones, our TVs, our computers the Zoom um, classes that you're gonna be, some of you will be taking online in the fall. Technology is a pretty amazing thing. And since this whole COVID thing started, technology in many ways has helped to save us and bring us together. So I thank God for technology. I thank God for coffee. That's my favorite beverage in the world. Uh, it's dark and it's hot and it's smoky and it's delicious. And every single morning, I hope that I never take for granted how good it tastes and how it helps wake me up and start my day. So I thank God for coffee. I thank God for this red and ripe tomato. This is a tomato that I actually grew in my own garden. Now, God provided the sun and the rain um, and the seeds. Um, but now I get to eat this tomato later tonight in a really good salad. And I'm just grateful for food, for really good food. And then finally, I'm going to show you a picture. I am thankful for my family. For my family. For all the people in my life who I am connected to by blood and who love me and who I get to love too. That's pretty amazing when you think about it. So I am grateful for technology, for coffee, for good food, and for my family. And so today, I want you to think long and hard about what you are most thankful for to God in your life, and then maybe share that answer with your mom 
or with your dad or maybe tonight at dinner everybody could go around the table and say one thing that they are grateful to god for and so let's say a little prayer together let's bow our heads and put our hands together and talk to god god help us to be a people of gratitude to be more grateful to not take things for granted to look around in our lives and to not see just the things we don't have but help us to see the things that we do have to not think of the things that we want but think of the things that we have already been given by god and then help us to be a deeply grateful people god in the days and in the week ahead and all this we ask in the name of jesus christ let everybody say amen Our scripture this day comes to us from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 12 to 23. Chapter 5, verses 12 to 23, and I would invite you to follow along at home if you have your Bible with you. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you, esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, and we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Amen. All right, friends. Before the sermon today, let's be in a spirit of prayer together. Let us pray. O oh God, I ask you this day to be in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, to open us up to your word, that when we need comfort, it might comfort us, that when we need wisdom, it might give us wisdom, that when we need to be motivated or pushed to change, it might do that that it might transform us somehow, God, into the people that you truly want us to be and transform this world, this world, into the creation that you wish it to be. Amen. And again, from that text, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Eagle Butte, South Dakota, found on the Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation. In the summer of 1994, I volunteered for three weeks as a part of a Habitat for Humanity Blitz build. Blitz, meaning some 3,000 volunteers from around the world, would construct and complete 32 homes for God's people in need, and all in just one week. Yup seven days, and all under the inspiring leadership of President Jimmy Carter. Now, everything went pretty smoothly on the work site until Wednesday, one blustery and dark gray afternoon when a huge and violent thunderstorm with 60 miles per hour winds blew in across the plains, coming right towards us. That was a storm this New England Yankee was not used to seeing or experiencing or preparing for. Not at all. As you look to the east that day, the view on the reservation went on for miles, the plains being among the flattest places in our country. And so out there, maybe five or six miles away, way off at the edge of the horizon were these gigantic almost black thunderclouds, stretching from the ground up to thousands of feet in the air and 
it was all headed straight for us and our work site our supervising house builder a funny and smart man named tim suddenly began yelling orders we've got about five minutes before this storm hits if it isn't already nailed down tight secure it right now and i mean everything sheetrock tools nail buckets lumber now go and so a spring to action we did lashing down with rope any item that could get picked up and blown away or worse could become a missile dangerous we scrambled and got stowed or lashed down almost all of the site save for one lone piece of four by eight sheetrock everybody inside and then from the shelter of that house we watched in wonder as that mini tornado blew through our neighborhood swirling up clouds of dust howling and then picking up that lone piece of sheetrock dragging it along in its wake as it passed over then through then blew onward westward to continue in its trail of damage that sheetrock isn't coming back to earth until it gets to colorado someone joked now the practical and spiritual lesson that i learned that day was pretty simple when you know that a storm is coming when you see that a storm is coming when everyone around you is warning you that a storm is about to hit you need to do everything you can do to prepare to prepare to get ready to lay up supplies to batten down the hatches so when the storm finally arrives damage can be minimized shelter can be taken and lives and spirits can be saved friends it's hard to believe that we all have been living in this covid world now for more than five months it's hard to believe we've come this far and yet truth be told we all know that we still have a long way to go for any sense of normalcy to return and we are now moving out of the summer days when being outside and being with folks is so much easier to days and times that will be colder and darker and let's face it harder add on top of this what may be one of the most divisive presidential elections ever and the economic struggles of so many and well i don't think it is hyperbolic of us to recognize that there's a storm coming a storm there may be times in the months ahead when each of us finds our spiritual health our mental health even our sanity challenged there will be days when the sun rises late and sets too early when maybe as a single person like me you spend more than a day all alone and solo and maybe wonder when will i actually see someone again or if you are a family person hemmed in on all sides by kids and dogs and spouses 24 7 you may wonder if ever again you will have any alone time i have heard lots of friends and family beginning to talk about this coming storm and yet i know me and maybe you it's easier to be in denial right it's still warm and sunny let's not face the storm until we have to but friends then we may not be prepared prepared and so today and for the next two sundays i will be suggesting simple faith-based strategies for getting ready spiritually for the fall and the winter practical ways we can tap into the most amazing powers in the universe god and love and faith god and love and faith because friends this is what will get us through to the other side of the storm now to the scripture we read today saint paul was writing a letter to new believers in thessalonica a port city in northern greece where in the first century he helped establish one of the first christian communities and churches paul was writing to them to give them hope to encourage them and to remind them what it meant then 
what it still means now to practice the Christian faith and to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. At the end of uh, the letter, which we heard today, is a beautiful coda, a series of exhortations where Paul gives them practical and powerful advice to get along together as a community and, into, and to face into whatever life might bring them. Sunny days, absolutely, but stormy days, too. And so Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. To prepare for the days ahead, I truly believe that one of the most important spiritual disciplines we must carry out and practice every day is gratitude. Gratitude. To take time every day, maybe in the morning with your coffee, or maybe as you walk the dog, or maybe around the dinner table, or maybe just before you go to bed, to be intentional about listing out the gifts from God that you are grateful for in all circumstances. Now, notice that Paul does not say be thankful for all circumstances. I do not believe that God expects us to be thankful for every circumstance, for the person at the grocery store who insists on staying way too close to you physically in the line, or to be thankful for the anxiety you feel at sending a kid off to college, or to be thankful for your young child who makes a racket while you are on a Zoom business call, or to be thankful for that relatives of yours you just cannot talk to, to about politics because it always leads to a big family blowout. No, we are not asked to thank God for the storms of life. We are challenged to find within the midst of these strange days that we find ourselves living in, the people and the circumstances and the surprises and the love and the grace and the blessings that we experience in spite of whatever we are facing. A story. Many of you know I was given a new hip in early June, and I know I expected by this time in my recovery to be walking all over the neighborhood without a problem and zipping up and down the stairs without a care and maybe even tap dancing. Well, maybe not that last activity. But the truth is my hip is healing much more slowly than I would like, that I still need to use a cane some days and still need to take it slow. And on my bad days, the last thing I want to do is to thank God in that circumstance. And yet, if I look hard enough and think hard enough, I can always find so much to be grateful for right now. A wonderful job that's allowed me to get better with lots of time to heal and health insurance to pay for most of my medical bills, and friends who come to my house every single week and walk patiently with me around the neighborhood, and my family who checks in on me, who calls to say, how you doing? And a faith that reminds me that this too shall pass, that one day I will be through the valley and be up on the mountaintop once again. Thank you, God. Friends, what are you thankful for to God in all of your circumstances this beautiful summer day, this God-blessed Sabbath? For me, gratitude is essentially about perspective, godly perspective. Gratitude does not change circumstances, but gratitude always does transform for the better how we perceive life, all of life. It makes us see the rainbow and not just the storm clouds. It makes us look for the good and not merely the bad. It reminds us that in any given moment, we can always, we must always find something, even just one thing, to thank our God for. To realize that no matter what, our generous and giving God is always active in our daily faith walks. In her book, The Language of Letting Go, this is how the author Melody Beatty describes what happens to life when we seek to be grateful every single day in all circumstances. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. 
gratitude turns it gratitude unlocks the fullness of life because it turns out that we have enough and more gratitude turns denial into acceptance chaos to order confusion to clarity gratitude can turn a meal into a feast a house into a home a stranger into a friend it turns problems into gifts failures into successes and the unexpected into perfect timing and mistakes into per important events gratitude can turn an existence into a real life and disconnected situations into important and beneficial lessons gratitude makes sense of our past brings peace for today and creates a vision for tomorrow gratitude just makes things right friends gratitude does make things right all things right even a pandemic even ugly politics even fears that keep us up in the middle of the night and even it will break through whatever the storms are that lie ahead for us as individuals and families and the church and a nation and a world so again i ask all of us to answer this one question every day maybe write it down in a journal um, and whisper it to your spouse just before you go to bed or say it out loud in a prayer what are you thankful for to god in all of your circumstances let this gratitude save us sustain us inspire us empower us and give us the hope that only god can finally give so thank you god thank you god let all god's grateful people say amen
Friends, let's be in a spirit of prayer together. Let us pray. O oh God, foster within us a deep sense of thanksgiving for all good gifts around us. Help us to have faith that these gifts, God, these gifts are heaven sent. These gifts are meant for all people. And so, God, this day, if we find ourselves with so many gifts, even too many gifts, help us to have the generosity to share with others so that all might be free, so that all might be able to live without fear, so that all might have decent housing, so that all might be fully engaged in this world and healthy. In gratitude, God, help us to share. And God, in particular this day, we ask you deeply and fully to prepare us for the days ahead. Help us to not be overwhelmed by fear or anxiety, but instead bind us together even more closely in the church, in our families, in our nation, and in our world so that we might walk together with each other especially as we move into fall and into the winter and into all of the challenges that those seasons will mean for us. And now, God, in the quiet places of our hearts, hear our prayers this day. All of these things and so much more we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so, along with gratitude, when we give thanks, um, we give thanks. It's thanksgiving. The notion that out of a deep sense of gratitude, we can do nothing but give. And so I invite all of you to give to places and people and institutions like the church that try our best to heal this broken world, to lift up the downtrodden, to comfort the afflicted, to hear the voices of the oppressed, and to just make this world a more loving place. And if you are new to our video this morning, or a visitor, uh, you can make donations online at our website, pilgrimsherborn.org, pilgrimsherborn.org. And I offer an extra prayer of thanksgiving today for all of our members and friends who have been so faithful and so generous in their giving in the months that we have kind of walked through together as a church. And so uh, those who would like to, I would invite you to follow along for the doxology. told you it was going to be like cable access sometimes. Uh, friends, I just want to thank you all for coming today. Um, our final hymn is Now Thank We All Our God, a very kind of familiar and well-loved hymn. I would invite you to um, look at and maybe even sing along with the words that are printed in our online um, uh, uh, our online um, excuse me um, order of worship, and then I'm also going to put the words up right here so people can see them as well.
And so our final hymn is, Now Thank We All Our God. So I get the feeling that you hopefully are aware that that was David Teedman playing um, the organ for us. And how grateful I was to be able to get over to church and record him this week. Uh, in approximately 20 minutes or so, uh, you're welcome to join us for our virtual coffee hour at 10 o'clock. The link for that coffee hour can be found on our Facebook page and on pilgrimsherborn.org. And so, uh, a benediction to send us forward. God, send us forth as your people, as a people deeply grateful for all good gifts around us. So send us forth as a people of thanksgiving who are so deeply grateful for all that we have that we can do nothing but share those gifts with other people, especially your people in need. And so bless us, God, and keep us, God, and move us into the weeks into the days ahead with a deep sense of gratitude and with thanksgiving. Let all God's people say, Amen.